Last year, we paid nothing for our electricity. In fact, we actually made money from our solar panels. My name is Reese, and I designed and installed this solar system on our house, and we needed a big one. We have seven people on our family, we live in Pennsylvania, and we have electric baseboard heat. But solar panels can be expensive, and it can take time to install everything. So the big question is, was it worth it to get solar? Well, to answer that in this video, I'm gonna show you the secret of how we get away without paying for electricity and our solar production numbers. I'm gonna go over the five main categories of solar expenses and show you what I bought, how much it cost, and how I calculated my rate of return. And then finally, I'm gonna show you how much I saved by doing this myself. So first, how do we get away without paying for electricity? Well, the journey begins right here, understanding how much electricity we use. Here's one of our electric bills before we got solar, and I'd say this is close to average for us for the year, though it could be a little higher or lower depending on the weather. And before getting solar, we were paying about $181 a month, which includes heating and cooling our house. In my last video about how I did the solar installation, I mentioned using a program called PV Watts. It's a helpful online tool to get a rough estimate how much power you could produce at your location. I have directions on how to use that if you're interested. It's in my beginner's guide to getting solar if you find that helpful. So after I put in all the information for my house, it gave me a whole range of what was reasonable to expect. I also used other online modeling tools like PV Sketch and Solar Edge, and I got a whole range of numbers. Solar Edge was actually on the high end, close to 21,000 kilowatt hours a year. This is exciting because it gave me the confidence that I could get to net zero. And if I did the project myself, I could see some big savings. So I decided to go for it. And after getting the permits, buying everything and installing it, I was eager to see if those original estimates would match reality. I'd be really disappointed after all that time, money and energy. Those electric bills didn't go to zero like I expected. I even spent on the high end of my budget to get premium Panasonic panels that enabled me to maximize the solar on my roof. So this had better be worth it. Now it's important to mention here that you have two main options with solar. You can get a grid tie system where you're still connected to the power grid, or you can get an off grid system when you're only using batteries for storage. In my setup here, it is a grid tie system and I don't have any batteries. But you might ask, what do you do when it's dark? That's a great question. I draw power from the power company whenever it's dark. But what makes this financially worth it is something called net metering. In Pennsylvania, what this means is I get credit on my power bill whenever I make extra power. So the power company is sort of like my battery bank and it allows me to store up all the summer sun and all the excess that I make so that in the winter time or when it's dark, I'm drawing from that credit. So it's a pretty sweet setup. Even though I installed the system about two years ago, I am still amazed at how accurate the modeling was. Here's a report from the past calendar year, and you can see I have two inverters and what each produced. And in total, the 48 solar panels produced over 19,371 kilowatt hours. Again, I think this is amazing because the number is right in line with all those estimates I got beforehand. The lowest estimate was 18,500, and the highest was just over 21,000. And incredibly, with weather changes, snow, shade, debris in my panels, the actual production number was almost directly in the middle. Now let's talk about how much I pay per month. Here are a few bills from last year. One for zero dollars, another for four, and another for seven dollars. And actually, seven dollars is the normal monthly amount. Here's a screenshot from my phone for the past three months over winter, and you can see it's about seven dollars per month. But oh, wait, I thought you said you don't pay anything for electricity. Well, we don't. Let me explain. To be connected to the power grid to supply me with power when it's dark, it costs about $7 a month, or about $84 a year. But there are two important ways that I earn money from solar that offset that cost. The first is one of the benefits of net metering. Remember I mentioned I get a credit built up on my bill? Here's an example. You can see in mid-December, I have about 5,000 kilowatt hours banked up. This number goes down throughout the winter. And if I have any extra kilowatt hours bank credit when May comes around, the power company pays me for the extra as a financial credit on my bill and I start back at zero. So last May we had 315 kilowatt hours left over and I got a credit of about $17. Not much, but it's something. The bigger financial piece is the second one, which is something called an SREC. This is a different kind of solar credit. It stands for Solar Renewable Energy Certificate. Most states in the US have net metering, but not all states have an SREC program. Here's how it works. For every 1,000 kilowatt hours produced by solar, I get one certificate or one credit. I'm then able to sell these credits on a marketplace. Here's one that I've used before called Flat Exchange. Because in the state, there's a supply and demand for SRECs, 
prices can fluctuate. For example, the highest I ever got for an SREC was $40 and the lowest I got was $19. Last year my system made 19 SRECs and I sold them for an average price of about $27, which means I made just over $500 from selling SRECs. Now, if I subtract off that $7 monthly charge or that $84 a year, that means not only did I not pay for electricity last year, I made roughly $400. Now let's talk about money. How much did I spend on all my solar equipment? A solar installation can be broken down into five main categories. The first one is permits and interconnection to the grid. The biggest thing you need for grid-tied solar array is a grid. You may not like all the paperwork, but the bottom line is you need the power grid and you need their permission to connect your solar panels to their grid. Now for me, all that paperwork, understanding the National Electric Code, making the plan set, believe it or not, was actually one of the hardest parts of this whole DIY process for me. But what I ended up spending was about $722 for those fees and the application to connect to the grid. The second category is sometimes called balance of service. This means all the wires, connectors, conduit, special tools, and all the small parts. For me, it also included what I paid my electrician to do, that final grid connection to the meter. And for all of that, I spent about $1,500. The third category is racking, or how you plan to mount your panels. For me, I had to put them up on the roof. So this includes the flashing, the mounts, the aluminum rails like this, and all the associated hardware. And for all of that, I spent a little bit more than $2,300. The fourth category are the inverters. The main role of these guys is to convert direct current to alternating current. Because I have a solar edge system, each one of these inverters is connected to 24 power optimizers, one per solar panel. This enables me to monitor the output of each panel as well as it makes the system more efficient. Now for two inverters and 48 power optimizers, I spent about this much. And finally, there are the solar panels themselves. There are a ton of different options for panels. They all have different power outputs, different physical dimensions, among other things. And for me, I really wanted to get 100% of our electric bill covered, and with my roof a certain size, it did limit my options. I was originally gonna go with a less expensive brand, and then I switched to a higher-end Panasonic panel when I saw them on sale, and I figured it was worth spending a little bit more for them. These panels have a 19.4% efficiency, they perform very well in hot weather, and the performance warranty is outstanding. These panels are warranted to produce no less than 91% of their original output even after 25 years. And I've been really happy with them so far. So for the 48 Panasonic panels, I spent about this much. So if we add all this up, my total in the five categories is just under 23,000. I qualified for the 30% tax credit, so that takes me down to about 16,000. Now before solar, I was paying about $2,100 a year, not including that $7 a month charge. So without adding the income from the SREX, I'm looking at about a 13% annual ROI. And if we do add in that $513 of SREC income, that number goes up above 16%. And this also would give me a payback period of about six years. Now, future electricity and SREC prices could change these calculations. For example, if SREC prices go back to the $40 level, my payback is closer to five years. And if they go lower than $19, my payback is closer to seven years. Now, a lot of you asked in the last video, how much did you save by installing solar yourself? Now, when I did DIY solar, I sort of did it the crazy way tons of research, talked to a lot of people, and figured out how to pull it all together without getting hurt or breaking my house. Now to get a sense of the savings, it's helpful to use the figure price per kilowatt. Now caveat here, prices widely fluctuate all the time, equipment isn't always the same, it's not all apples to apples, so I wouldn't use my figures as your main measuring stick. Okay, I spent just under 23,000 for a 15.6 kilowatt system, that's about $1.47 a watt, for a similar system, a local installer quoted me a price of $2.54 a watt, so if you take the difference, I saved roughly $16,500 doing it myself. And if you factor in the tax credit, I saved about $12,000 installing solar myself. One of the ways I like to think about this investment is like I bought a rental property and I put it up here on the roof. It earns about 14% a year, has no late payments, and almost no maintenance. Solar's been great for us, and I think it could be great for a lot of people, so I'd love to help you if you're considering it. Again, I have some resources listed down in the video description. One of them is my beginner's guide to getting solar to help you evaluate if solar might be a good fit for you. Keep letting me know your comments and your solar questions, and stay tuned for the next video where I tackle what happens to solar panels when it snows.